Well, our brothers and sisters, welcome to the Surefire Live Conference platform. The platform the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Today's uh, teaching is the continuation with our theme, The New Beginning. So today is New Beginning Part 2. New Beginning Part 2. Let's start by reading our text. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, and then Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. I read it quickly. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. But from the beginning, it was not so. The Almighty God bless his word in Jesus' name. I want us to start the teaching of today from this context. The context of choice. So when we're talking about new beginning. As we've said in part one, we're saying that in Christ Jesus, God Almighty has given to all humankind, every one of us, the opportunity to enjoy everything as it was intended to be in the beginning. But the choice is yours. The choice is mine. Let's get that context again. Um, in part one, I did emphasize the statement by Thomas Edison. He said 5% of the people think, 5% of the people, only 5% of the people think, and 10% of the people think they think. They think that they think. The remainder would rather die than think. Uh, when I was uh, quoting this in part one, I said 5% uh, of the people think and 5% think that they think. Uh, and the exact quote from Thomas Edison is stated as 10%. Uh, I mean, and he's been really generous there. If you look at the world and you look at what is going on, especially in the context of what we are talking about here, the new beginning. Um, we can't hold to hard numbers. However, when you look at what is going on in the world, you really ask yourself what that percentage is. But let's take it for what it is. 5% of the people think, think. The, the other 10% of the people think that they think. And the remainder, 85%, would rather die than think. And this takes me to what the Bible says about choice that I'm talking about. So we can take from what Thomas Edison has said there that it is a choice. People choose rather not to think and want to just go it easy. So they rather die than think. So thinking has become such a hard thing for people to do, to want to even do, to want to even attempt. So in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, the Bible says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, 
Therefore, choose life. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. And I want to ask you, what is your choice? Are you ready to choose the new beginning? The privilege and opportunity Almighty God has given us. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, Joshua there also, having led the children of Israel into the promised land, he said to them, choose for yourself this day whom you shall serve. And he declared his own choice to them. He said, but as for me and my family, as for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will not serve us. And all manner of chance. These days you see people carry all manner of things around their bodies. We have mixed multitudes. On one hand, they are calling God. On the other hand, they have lock bands that they have ordered. Do you know what is behind the lock band? How could there be a lock band? Lucky band, lucky uh, ring, lucky hand band, lucky wrist band, without a demon that is monitoring it. I've always told us there are only two kingdoms, brothers and sisters. You can decide to deceive yourself, but God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will reap. There are only two kingdoms the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of light, and the kingdom of Satan is the kingdom of darkness. You choose where you belong. The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, specifically verse 13, it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the son of his law by whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, our sins. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And so lucky charm, lucky handband, wristband, bracelets, we carry it and we are on the pulpit, we carry it and we are praying to God. So Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether you will serve the Lord or you will serve the idols of your fathers. He said, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord, the almighty God, our heavenly father. And his son, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the only one by whom we have access and through whom we have access to God. He is the one through whom God has given us new beginning. New beginning as recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that we have just read. That in the beginning, what happened? God blessed humankind. To be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, to have dominion over everything that moves on the earth, to live by every word of God. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God and to have everything, everything as God has said it should be. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is how God made it in the beginning. And this is what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. 
for you and for me to give us the new beginning, which is what I call the divine jubilee. The divine jubilee. So you remember in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 21, Jesus proclaimed this jubilee unto us. This was the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 61. So Jesus entered the synagogue as recorded there in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. He entered the synagogue. And before the full glare of everyone, Jesus proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has anointed me to do what? To bring humankind into the new beginning. To restore humankind to the way God made it and meant it to be in the beginning. As God said it to be in the beginning and it was so. We know, we know right now that there are many things in our lives that is not so as it was in the beginning, which is what Matthew chapter 19 that we read emphasized. Matthew chapter 19, that verse 8, Jesus answered here and said, but from the beginning it was not so. So brothers and sisters, I want you to take a moment and just pause and ask yourself, what was it in the beginning? Well, how did God meant it to be for me in the beginning? And what are those things that were not meant to be so, but are now so in my life? So I want us to caption this. In the beginning, it was not so versus in the beginning, it was so. So take a journey right now and just think for a moment. Remember the thinking, that hard thing that 85% rather would die than do. But it is necessary because there are lies. The key to you enjoying the new beginning, the life God has given you to live, given me to live. So in the beginning, it was not so versus in the beginning, it was so. How was it in the beginning? How did God say it should be for you, for me, in the beginning. So Jesus Christ here proclaimed, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to do what? Let's hear what Jesus announced, which we have captioned the divine jubilee. Because in the Old Testament, which is the image of the things to come or the shadow of the things to come, rather the shadow, the shadow of the things to come, not the image, the shadow of the things to come. And the real thing has come in Christ Jesus. The law of Jubilee happened every 50 years. I have said that and we've articulated, we've looked at that. And we have seen such great blessings that were provided in the law of Jubilee. And once the law of Jubilee or once Jubilee was proclaimed, the law took effect. And so once Jesus Christ, in the book of Luke chapter 4, that we talked about, announced this divine jubilee, this new beginning, this restoration of humankind unto how God said it is so, how God said it should be, mankind is at liberty, is at freedom to choose to enjoy what God has said. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4, 
in verse 21. It's written, and he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And what was this scripture? Just reading and then I will itemize the things. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to, li to, to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, as we have seen that that acceptable year of the Lord is to proclaim the Lord's salvation and unlimited favor. It didn't stop there. If you go to Isaiah 61 and continue reading, he continues and says, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. He also added, he said, when he said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, he said, and the day of vengeance of our God. Hallelujah. Beloved, we can say categorically that when Jesus proclaimed this divine jubilee, proclaimed this new beginning, he went on to reel out the blessings. We know that in the beginning, when we read Genesis, the Bible clearly says God bless humankind and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. But he did not say dominion over humankind. I will keep emphasizing that because this is part of the problem. Man has left his duty, and all man tries to do is to oppress one another, and oppression brings war. Oppression brings strife, bring contention. But thank God through Jesus Christ, every oppression must cease in your life, in my life, in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. We continue said to have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth, fish, birds, beasts, etc. But God reserved the dominion over humankind to himself. That man will continue to live by the words that comes out of the mouth of God. And through his son, Jesus Christ, he has spoken to us. And so Jesus here announced and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And he began to reel out that blessing. Again, we'll come back to uh, put that together. He could, so Genesis continued. The blessing in Genesis continued. He said, whatever God said, it was so. So whatever word God said, it was so. And it remains so in your life, in my life today. Everything God made in the beginning was very good. So Jesus, in this divine jubilee, in this new beginning, reeled out. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to announce to you, as I announce to you today, the word of God, that God has brought you, brought me, brought us into the new beginning, restoring all things through Jesus Christ unto us. What are these? Number one, he said to preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is the word of God. That same word, 
that in the beginning, whatever God said, it was so. God has restored us to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when the devil came to tempt Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, as we have seen, Jesus reminded the devil, say, oh, you don't know. <laughs> All things have been restored. Man from now on shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hello, brothers. The gospel is good news. Every word of God that you can grasp and live by it shall be fulfilled in your life. And there is so much in the word of God written in the Bible, inspired by the Holy Spirit through revelation that we are to live by and prosper thereof. Number two, atonement and forgiveness of sins. He continued to reel out this new beginning blessing. Number three, healing and help. For he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to heal the broken heart. To heal the broken heart. So uh, healing and health is restored to you and, and I to enjoy. Number four, freedom and liberty. Freedom from every captivity and deliverance from every form of oppression. Physical oppression, spiritual oppression. Number five, righteousness. Righteousness. Oh, that we no longer live in condemnation, but be restored unto God. As it is written that God, through Jesus Christ, has made us the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus said to that woman that was caught in adultery, neither do I condemn you. He said, but go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus said, God has given us his gifts that by his gifts, all humankind might be saved. The love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Righteousness. We are sanctified by his word, his word is truth. By his blood, the blood has cleansed us and pushed us. By the Holy Spirit of God that has been given to us, God has reconciled us to himself and is, has imputed unto us his righteousness through Jesus Christ. Number six, recovery and restoration. Recovery and restoration. Recovery of whatever possession, whatever loss, whatever we have lost, whatever the enemy has stolen from us, recovery and restoration. As we saw there in the Isaiah where the prophecy was given originally, he said to comfort those who mourn. So for, instant, for mourning, God has sent us comfort. The comfort through his son Jesus Christ and the comfort of the Holy Spirit is with you, is with me. It says beauty for ashes. So instead of ashes, God has sent us beauty. Hallelujah. Oh, the name of Jesus is beautiful beyond description. He is beautiful for every situation. He is sufficient in all situations. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, what a glorious life that God has sent to us. Recovery and restoration. Number seven, God's abundant and unlimited favors. For he said to proclaim, to proclaim the acceptable year 
of the Lord, the year of God's salvation and unlimited favor. Glory be to God. Number eight, redemption and salvation. Number nine, safety and protection. Number 10, joy, rejoicing, and celebrations. Number 11, vengeance of God against God's enemy and his people. This also talks about divine judgment and the fact that this world will not remain like this forever. The day of God's vengeance. Vengeance against the wicked that perpetrate wickedness against God's people and that final day when God will judge all things. But God does not want you to, you and I, to perish. And so he has given us his son, Jesus Christ. Would you make the choice to be on God's side rather to face the wrath of God? Number 12, eternal life. Eternal life. Number 13, the glory and abiding presence of God. I went very quickly over those. So I'm just going to run through it summarily now so you can pick. So God has brought us, has given us the new beginning through his son, Jesus Christ, which I call the divine jubilee because Jesus proclaimed it just the same way the Jubilee was announced. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to proclaim. He proclaimed it. The new beginning. Number one, I said, restore us the gospel, the good news, to live by the word of God. Number two, atonement and forgiveness of sins. Number three, healing and health. Number four, freedom and liberty. Number five, righteousness. Number six, recovery and restoration. Number seven, God's abundance and unlimited favors. Number eight, redemption and salvation. No, number nine, safety and protection. Number 10, joy, rejoicing and celebration. Number 11, vengeance and God's judgment. Number 12, God's vengeance and judgment. Number 11 is God's vengeance and judgment. Number 12, eternal life. Number 13, the glory and abiding presence of God. You can add more. Whatever God said in the beginning, it was so it was so. If you make the choice in Christ Jesus to live by this blessing, it shall be so in your life, for it is so in God. The choice is yours. Now, Jesus also made us to understand that there are many of us and many things in our lives that in the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, it was not so. Can you take a look at your life now? And look at these 13 blessings that Jesus reeled out. And look at your own life. And look at those things that in the beginning were not so. I've already touched on a few. I want to say categorically that in all the blessings of God that God made for mankind in the beginning, sickness was not there. It was not so in the beginning. And if we start with this specific uh, Matthew chapter 19, oh, we can go on and on. Here Jesus said, Moses gave you permission to divorce your wife. But in the beginning, it was not so. So, in the beginning, it was not so. 
But God always make a way, make a provision because of the stiff nakedness of our lives. So God does not condemn anybody. God always wants us to come to his provision. Are you with a wife? Don't put her away. Are you with a husband? Don't put him away. But rather submit yourself to God and submit yourself one to another. So you may be able to enjoy the blessing that God provided for this union. You probably don't know the blessing that is upon the union of man and a woman, a man and a woman coming together. There is a great blessing in the word of God. If you're willing to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, you will enjoy the blessing. For example, the Bible says, he that finds a wife has found a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Obtains favor from the Lord. That's the word of God. So you can go to God and say, God, this is your word. I have found a wife and I have found what? A good thing. And I have obtained favor from you, God. Let your favor go with me. Go with my wife. Go with me with my family, let your favor, and you will see the favor of God. For man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. For you who have, uh, who hasn't married yet, or for you who is unmarried, now this is the time to get it right. So you will not suffer divorce. God does not condemn you, you who have uh, divorced, but God wants you to make amend. Get yourself back together. Reestablish your relationship with God. Forgive your partner and forget it and move on with your life. You, you're the only one who knows why. And that's why it's important for your marriage to take note. Don't rush into marriage. Seek God and get to know the purpose of God for your life. So you will marry a wife that will be a complement to that purpose. So you will marry a man that will be a complement to that purpose. I often tell people that, look, when you marry, you have a joint destiny. Unfortunately, people don't understand this oneness in God. In marriage, it is oneness. It's not God that forces you. You are the one to, that has brought yourself together. But when you have done that, God says you become one. And you have to learn to operate as one. This oneness means togetherness. It means unity. Unity of purpose, unity of focus. Unity, a lot of things. We'll touch on that another time separately. So let's move now. So Jesus said, you divorce your wife because of your own self and your own problem. It's not because that's how I ordained it to be, not because that's how I want it to be. So Moses made that to suit you. But how did I make it to be from the beginning? It says, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning, at the beginning, brothers and sisters, this is what God has always intended, is always to make everything good as he made it in the beginning. God will make your life good as he made it in the beginning. So Matthew chapter 19, verse 4, he said, have you not read that he, he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh, one. 
oneness, oneness of purpose, fulfilling God's destiny for your life. The other thing I want to talk on, just touch on quickly, I've mentioned every other thing, is this matter of sickness, disease, and infirmity. In the beginning, brothers and sisters, hear me, it was not so. God created all things and looked at it and said everything was very good. And through his son, Jesus Christ, God has restored us to enjoy this divine health. In Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, I just want to start from verse 14. It says, now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her, he, he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. 16, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled. Again, fulfilled. It has been fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Jesus took your infirmity, took my infirmity and bore your sicknesses and my sicknesses. And so the scripture declares by his stripes, we were healed and we are healed right now and we remain healed forever. If you come to Jesus Christ, you receive this restoration, this new beginning. And there are so many things. So in the beginning, it was so means you will establish, according to the word of God, these blessings of God, 13 of them that I have put as headlines. There are so many, and there are so under here for your life. Versus in the beginning, it was not so, which you must stand against them, and they must go from your life. So, as I have said, in the beginning, it was so, point number three, health and healing. It was so, you remain in health. You prosper and remain in health as your soul prosper, prospers. In the beginning, it was not so, is what? Sickness, infirmities, diseases. And so what are you to do? To say, God, I live in this new beginning of health, divine health. And I stand against what sickness, diseases, and infirmities. They must go because in Christ Jesus, oh, I receive the divine jubilee, the new beginning. Everything God made in the beginning was very good. Anything short of very good, anything short of excellence, as God made it to be, it was not so in the beginning. So through Jesus Christ, God has brought us to the original blessing of God as it was in the beginning. So let it be in your life now and in my life, in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I want to pray with you and I want you to pray with me and pray for me as I pray for you. Let's join our faith together and pray. Open your mouth and pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, 
I thank you, the God of new beginning. Thank you for giving us new beginning through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As it is written, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Heavenly Father, together we agree and we ask, let everything that constitute all things, everything that was not so in the beginning, in your original plan for our lives, in your original plan for humankind, God Almighty, let them pass away right now. For we are in Christ and we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord, is our Savior. And Almighty God, we ask, let the new beginning, the new beginning that you have given to us through Jesus Christ, manifest now in our lives. Let the new beginning, the blessing of the new beginning, that every word of God, every promise of God for our lives be fulfilled. The new beginning of the atonement, the forgiveness, the sanctification by the blood of Jesus be upon us. The new beginning of divine healing and divine health be upon us. The new beginning of the freedom and liberty to love God, freedom and liberty to honor and serve God be upon us a new beginning of walking in God's righteousness, a new beginning of recovery and restoration of all the blessings of God. Whatever we have lost, lost, O oh God Almighty, let all be restored unto us, restored unto our family. Father, every estrangement, let it be cut off from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, the new beginning of God's abundance, and unlimited favors, a new beginning of God's redemption and salvation be upon us and our family, a new beginning of safety and protection, a new beginning of joy, rejoicing, and celebration, a new beginning of eternal life, a new beginning of God's glory and God's abiding presence be upon us. And the new beginning that we walk continually and your judgment, your righteous judgment guides us. Father, thank you. Glory be to your holy name. For these great blessings that you have blessed us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let our lives please you. Let our lives glorify you. Let our lives honor you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before we go, if you've not given your life to Jesus, that's the only way to enjoy the new beginning. So pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you through your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior. I confess that Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I repent of my sins. And from today, I ask, Lord God Almighty, give me this new beginning, this new life in Christ Jesus. Wash away all my sins. Give me your Holy Spirit and transform my life. Thank you, my Father, my God. In Jesus' name. I have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. And bye-bye.